nothing but then the kernel function is nothing but the probability of finding cat S2 is cat Z. And that's what quantum support vector machines are essentially. Hi, I'm Jay Shah, a quantum machine learning developer. And today we are going to talk about quantum support vector machines. So what are quantum ACMs anyway? A very simple way of describing quantum support vector machines is that just a class of support vector machines that depend on the kernel trait, all right? But obviously that's not all to it. The another uh, you know key feature of a quantum SVM is that some of the calculations of this particular SVM is done on a quantum computer, all right? But uh, like, what what are what can a uh, quantum computer do? You know, what is it that that you know we can use quantum computer for? So a quantum computer is essentially good at you know giving you the probabilities of state. So what happens is you give quantum computer a quantum circuit, a quantum computer executes the quantum circuit, and in return it will give you you know probability of each possible state that you might find at the end. That's what a quantum computer is good at doing. Okay. But uh, so this is the key feature. This is kind of a key property of a quantum computer. And uh, we have we need to utilize this property inside the kernel tree. So a quantum SVM has two properties, you know, two key features. One is using the kernel tree, and the second is using quantum computer. All right. So these are the two things for a quantum SVM. And uh, before we move on, let's just you know revise what is a kernel trick anyway. So if your given data is not linearly separable, what you do is that is just project it in a higher dimensional space and just hope that in that higher dimensional space, the data becomes linearly separable. And let me show you a picture to understand that better. So if you see here, we have this two dimensions and this data, and obviously the data is not linearly separable. You use the kernel trick at the third dimension and you can see now, you know, data is now linearly separable. So this is what a kernel trick is essentially. Okay, let's get into a math now. Okay, and uh, if you see, uh, this is the uh, language and dual form of the soft margin classification. And what I really want you to uh, focus here is on this part. If you see in this entire uh, formulation. Uh, what what the input data is actually doing for we what we need input data for here is just you know computation of this inner product of the two input data vectors. So this is the part that we actually need to you know uh, run on a quantum computer, but uh, that's not all. Again, remember we we are using kernel trick inside uh, a quantum SVM. So we need a feature map first that can. Uh, project the data to a higher dimensional space. So let uh, this phi uh, be a feature map that uh, takes the input data of dimension n and then projects it to a higher dimension b, okay? And uh, now uh, if I just rewrite then, so we needed this inner product, right? And uh, this, what, uh, this is the kernel function that would take these two input data vectors uh, and then, you know, give us this. So it, it's like the I know the inner product of the projections of these two input data vectors, right? Okay, I think uh, that was good. Now let's move on to the next part. I'll just, I'm just I'm just rewriting it again here. And if we start the calculations now, okay, here comes the quantum part. So this is uh, the way of you know writing inner product uh, classically. But you know, for uh, now, and this is the way how you write in a product in quantum computing. Uh, uh, this is what uh, is something called direct notations that obviously I think you might have heard. And so, what you this is the standard product from classical to quantum. But uh, remember, we need a quantum circuit. Uh, so we have already, you know, the quantum SVM had two parts: kernel trick and quantum computer. We have utilized kernel trick part. But uh, now this is now the quantum circuit part comes. So we need this uh, state phi. So we, uh, the, for the notation part, I'll just call this capital uh, phi, the circuit phi that actually represents the quantum circuit. And this uh, small phi is a state phi that represents the state. And so what we will do is 
uh, we have this initial state cat zero. We have a corresponding quantum socket uh, which takes this input data vector x, uh, and uh, you know it when executed on the cat zero, it would just produce this state phi, and that's what we need, right? We need we need this state. Okay, so let's highlight this part again. And if I just substitute this, you know, just replace this state phi with the circuit phi, uh, I would get this. So I think uh, this is uh, this green green part is kind of really simple to understand. Uh, for the yellow part, is just the it's just the dagger the dagger of that particular quantum circuit. So it's just uh, reversing the circuit from right to left and inverting all the gates. It's really simple. The quantum SDKs take care of it. And uh, this is uh, bra zero, the dual of the cat zero. Again, this is basic direct notations, so nothing super complicated. And uh, I, I hope that was easy to understand. And just uh, I'll rewrite it here for the further calculations. Now, just consider this green part again. So this is phi is a quantum uh, circuit phi. We will execute circuit phi on cat zero. We will obviously get some state, say S1. And then again, if we uh, execute this uh, circuit phi dagger on this state S1, we will get some state S2. You know, this is again some state S2. And what I've done here now is just uh, try to rewrite this kernel function with respect to this state S2. All right. So if you look at this carefully, what this actually symbolizes is that it's just the probability of finding S2 in H0. Right. So remember, our quantum computer was good at giving the probabilities, right? And so this is what we are using actually. So this kernel, this definition of the kernel function, just says that uh, what would be the probability of finding this S two as as cat zero. This is what it is. So let me revise again. Uh, what we have done is we have initial state cat zero. We execute this first circuit on cat zero. After that, we would have another. So we have this another circuit uh, phi dagger. We would execute that. We would get this state S two. And what is S two now? If we re rewrite in terms of S two, it is nothing but then the kernel function is nothing but the probability of finding cat S two as cat zero. And that's what quantum support vector machines are essentially. And I hope I was able to give you a good understanding of these quantum support vector machines. So let's quickly revise what you've learned in this video. So the first part was features of USVM. Uh, so what were the two features? First was utilizing quantum computer for the calculations uh, by running quantum circuit. And then the second part was the use of the kernel trick. These were the two key features for QSVMs. And what were QSCMs uh, itself? Uh, you can just, uh, it was just, you know, the probability of measuring all zeros after you have prepared this uh, state S2. Have you prepared state S2? You execute the circuit phi and then you execute the circuit phi dagger. You get state S2 and you just, you know, measure the probability of uh, you know, finding all zeros. That's what QSCM are. Okay. And I, th I hope this was, uh, this was helpful and let me know what you think uh, in the comment section. Share this uh, video with your network and uh, there are a few links I've mentioned in the video. They are about uh, for visualization of uh, classical support vector machines and you know the dual form of classical uh, support vector machine and uh, the quantum support vector machines as well. So I highly encourage you to you know go through those links for a better understanding. And uh, that's it for this video. I'll meet you some other time in some other video. Uh, until then, take care.